violence in Rio de Janeiro has led the military taking over security of the city. And now, Bolsonaro is poised to give the military an even bigger role in Brazil's government. Let's talk about all this and more with Brazil's ambassador to the U.S., Sergio Amaral. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for being with us. Thank you for the invitation. Well, let me ask you, because your president-elect is getting much the same reaction that our current president got when he was elected, that people said he's boisterous, he says controversial, unkind things, that he's got big plans, uh, and some of them are not good for his political enemies. How is it being received in Brazil? How's it being received there? some similarities, I would say, between Mr. Bolsonaro and President Trump. But I think that uh, people understood that you have to take into account what the president-elect will do, he does, his policies, the people who are going to be in his cabinet. And since the second round of the elections, uh, president-elect was very moderate in what he's saying, in what he has indicated he would do. He committed to comply with the Constitution and with the Brazilian laws. And we have strong and resilient institutions. People think about what he might do, but people don't realize that the, the institutions are strong. They have been working hard against corruption. The, the judiciary has taken to jail more than 50 of, political leaders, more than 50 business leaders. So the institutions are working and they are resilient. Today, uh, he was praised and Brazil was praised by our former UN ambassador, who's now National Security Advisor, John Bolton, to President uh, Trump. And what he said today was, The recent elections of like-minded leaders in key countries, including Ivan Duque in Colombia, and last weekend, Jair Bolsonaro in Brazil, are positive signs for the future of the region and demonstrate a growing regional commitment to free market principles and open, transparent, and accountable governance. And that speech was about cracking down on what he called the Troika of Tyranny, and that included Venezuela, Cuba, and Nicaragua. Um, you share a large border with Venezuela, and there are very troubling times going on there. We are very concerned because this is a humanitarian crisis, and uh, there are 2,000 kilometers of uh, frontier with us. And uh, we are concerned. We have been working with the U.S., for instance, in the context of the OAS. We are open to the extent we can to bring about a peaceful transition for a democratic regime in Venezuela. Mm. Okay. Uh, in the meantime, this is what the Miami New Times had to say about your president-elect. He says he campaigned quite literally on spilling Brazilian blood, much like Filipino strongman Rodrigo Duterte. Bolsonaro has promised to mobilize police and paramilitary squads to shoot dissidents and criminals on sight. He has promised to purge left-wing outlaws. Is that a fair assessment of him? Or, as you said, has he moderated his views? Yes. The, the more recent uh, declarations are on the contrary. Indeed, they are on the opposite direction direction. What he has insisted a lot is the misadvantage that the police in Brazil has vis-a-vis -vis organized crime. Organized crime has stronger weapons than the police, and the police are indicted if there is a conflict against organized crime, and uh, the police is indicted and may go to jail if, for instance, in the context of this a conflict, a uh, and it is killed. Okay, now to the issue of China, because I know that our president has said, you saw in the piece there, that you all have very high tariffs, that he wants to work on trade with you. I know that you say you're running a deficit, so you want to work on trade with us as well. But the issue of China is very big in the region because the U.S. sometimes obviously has competing interests with China. Um, in a piece from the AP, the headline, Radical Plans and Risks in Foreign Policy of Brazil's Bolsonaro, says this, Bolsonaro will also be starting his administration amid friction with China, which has invested billions of dollars in energy, infrastructure, and oil projects in Brazil. During the campaign, he complained that the Chinese are not buying in Brazil. They are buying Brazil itself. Yes, I think this, there are no, not many indications now concerning foreign policy. And of course, the relationship with China is one of the important uh, issues because uh, China has a lot of investments in Brazil and it has become our most important trading partner. But the difference between the China-Brazil relationships and the relationship that China has with other countries is whenever we say something, they accept. I told the Chinese, you're not going to bring labor. They don't. You're not going to buy land. 
close to the frontier, they don't buy. This will much depend on us. And uh, we have to decide on the kind of policy we want to have with China. And I see no reason why they will not continue complying with that. Well, the world will watch and see how this new administration comes in. As you said, much to still learn about their foreign policy and, and all of those things across the spectrum. But in the meantime, obrigado. Thank you for coming <laughs> in, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Nice